This keyboard belongs to my church, and we've had it for over a decade, maybe two, and it's starting to show some wear. Now, because of the way I filmed this, this keyboard is actually already repaired, but if I show you this clip from before that happened. A bunch of this plastic is all cracked inside here, and also the keys are starting to clack when you press them down because the felt wore out, and I already tried to fix this a while ago and made it much worse. But anyway, we're gonna learn how to take this thing apart, how it works, and most importantly, how to put it back together better than it was. Let's go! human you or dog or cat or whoever may have stumbled upon this video, welcome! My name's Davis, I do engineering, music, and more, and today we're doing one of my favorite things, which is combining engineering with music. That's right, we're going to be looking at a keyboard from Nord, specifically this 76 key Nord Stage Revision C. Now, Nord has their reputation for a reason, and this is a beautiful instrument. But right now, we're gonna literally rip its guts out. <laughs> now, to start off with, I would actually recommend flipping this whole thing over while it's still in one piece. And... That's a mistake, ignore that. <laughs> yeah, I probably did that wrong the first time I was in here. Anyway, uh, you're gonna find three screws on the back. Ignore these screws for now. And there's also gonna be some holes without screws in them, probably. Uh, I, I don't know what those are for, probably mounting or something. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're gonna grab a drill here, and it should just come right out, put them in the appropriately labeled Dixie cup. There we go. And that will not really loosen up anything inside there, so we're free to just flip this back over the way it was, and now, if I push this to the other side and come around back, you're gonna find seven screws in this top little ridge here. And these are all the exact same screw as the three on the underside that we just took out. So this cup is actually labeled with case back and bottom. Doesn't matter where they go. And coming back around here, you should now have 10 screws in this cup. You're now gonna find five screws in each side. So those can all come out. And since these are recessed quite a bit, I recommend getting a nice powerful magnet to get those the rest of the way out. He says confidently, assuming they're already out. But anyway, as you can see, these are the same thread, but quite a bit longer than the other screws. So they get their own cut. Yeah, so the rest of those just came right out with a magnet. Or if you have a magnetized tip, on your screwdriver bit, that would probably be even better. But I do not, so, magnet time. So now with all of those screws out, this whole red top section should be free. You can just lift up occasionally like that. The important thing to watch out for is there are some ribbon cables here and you don't want to stretch those. In fact, as soon as this is up and you have access to them, I would just go ahead and pop these out, which you can do by pulling these levers here. And now those two ribbon cables are free. Two ribbon cables is all there is to it. And then this whole section you can just set aside for now because we are not working on this today. I did actually, uh, before this repair, I previously took that off to clean up the mod wheel because it was being a little sticky, so I put some contact cleaner in there, but um, didn't actually replace any parts, so I didn't bother to film that. But anyway, now that that's off, we can see the entire key bed and both of the circuit board assemblies here. And I forgot to film this part, but at this point you can remove all but one of the ribbon cables attached to this PCB, which should be the two big ones we took out a second ago, the two orange ones next to them, the white one next to that and the blue one on the other side. The orange ones might be a little tricky since there's not any great places to grip them or wedge anything to pull them up. You might need to use the cables themselves to help pull the connectors up, which normally is terrible practice, but if you're careful, it should be okay. The two big ones, of course, connect to the top panels and transmit data from all the buttons and display and everything. The two orange ones are the main ribbon cables for the keys themselves. The small white one I'm not sure about, but it also goes to the keybed PCB. And the blue one on the side goes to the aftertouch sensors. This 
this black one here goes to the power board and we actually can't take that out yet. So the next step is taking out this main PCB here, which is unfortunately necessary to get the key bed out because of the way that it overlaps this part here. Um, this board here seems to be just a power adapter circuit. That one can stay in place because it's not in the way of anything. But this one with all of the ports and uh, microchips and everything, that needs to come out. So I recommend pushing this to the edge of your keyboard because we need to get to these ports on the other side. Now the first step is to take care of these screws in front of the MIDI ports. And this is probably the only thing that I do not recommend using a drill for. Use an actual screwdriver by hand because these screws are teeny tiny and they go into plastic instead of metal so um, I've actually already stripped these trying to use a drill so take that as a warning once that's done though feel free to use a drill with a uh, little half inch socket on it to take care of these things Now that all the ports are free, we can remove three screws from the circuit board itself. And then this whole thing should just slide back like that to remove the, the ports from the holes there. And then you can just take the whole thing out. Now this ribbon cable for the power adapter needs to come out. And yes, that does need to happen after the rest of it is out because this tab will not open fully while it's in. So when you open those, that should just pop this right out. And now this whole board is free. So now we can start working on the actual key bed. I wouldn't flip the keyboard over in this state, but if you slide it over the edge of your table, you'll expose seven screws on the underside, which you can take out and put in their own little cup. After that, or before if you prefer, you can swap out for a hex bit. I used a 9 30 seconds inch socket, but that sounds really obscure, so I don't know if that's right. But uh, you can use that to unscrew all seven of the nuts on this back panel. And once those are all out of here, you can slide the whole thing back and then grip the metal on the sides, not the keys, and just lift straight up to remove the key bed. While you're in here, I definitely recommend cleaning up a bit if you've had this as long as we have. I already did a quick pass on this the first time I was in here, so it's not too bad anymore, but you can do this with a damp paper towel or microfiber cloth, some compressed air, just be sure to not get any of the electronics wet, of course. Now, if you only want to replace certain keys, but not the entire bed, you do still need to take the whole thing out of the case, but you can replace individual keys. So, so that's the good news. You just take a flathead screwdriver about the size of this notch here, this little pink tab sticking up, and you just put the screwdriver in that notch, push a little while you pull the underside of the key, and it should just pop right up like that. It does need quite a bit of pressure to do that, but don't feel like you're forcing it or you might break the tab. So it, it should just pop right up like that, and then you can continue pulling at an angle like this, and this part will release. The reason it needs to be out of the bed is because this part that comes up and grabs underneath, that will get stuck right there and you won't be able to pull it out. Same deal for the black keys, just push toward you on that tab, pull up, and bada boom. This one actually curls around the other direction, so you wanna pull out a little bit to pull it out. Uh, and then putting the back is even easier, no screwdriver needed, you just Put that back, make sure this is pushed back, otherwise it'll catch. And that's the wrong key. <laughs> so again, make sure this pink tab is pointed away from you, that'll make this easier. And then just push down. Put this back, doesn't matter if you do white keys or black keys first. For example, I'm reassembling this in the opposite order that I had disassembled it, but there we go. And you can see the keys are conveniently labeled. They have a little embossed label here. And what I learned was the numbers do not matter. So the white keys are labeled with the letter of whatever, like um, C through B, of whatever, like C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And that does matter. The octave does not. You can put, you, you can mix and match octaves, whatever. The black keys are only labeled with numbers and 
I, I think it's supposed to matter, but it really does not. Like, even when I opened up the keyboard from the factory, they were all mixed up, and s yeah, it doesn't matter. Black keys can go any order. But yeah, you can take off as many keys as you need. If for some reason you need to take off all of the keys, or even a substantial amount, I definitely recommend grouping them into sections of, like, Bs, As, Gs, Fs, like, all, all of that. And particularly, this is really important, keep track of the ones on the end because they are different from all the other keys. And if you lose two keys among 76, it's gonna be a nightmare to try to find them. <laughs> so definitely set these two aside if nothing else. Recommend grouping the others. But yeah, you can totally just like... And this is what it looks like with all of the keys removed and in that box there. You can see a couple of felt strips here and there's actually another one underneath that was responsible for the clacking. Because the problem was the mechanism with the weights here brings up this chunk of metal as the key goes down and the felt had worn out such that the metal was actually coming all the way up and clacking against the key here. And the reason this whole mechanism exists is so that the key can have that substantial weighted feel that you get on a regular piano. And that's great and all, but it's not so great when it doesn't work right. I tried to replace that felt with this new strip down here that actually this was the first one that I tried and neither of those works because this isn't the right size because they don't actually sell that felt and you're supposed to replace the entire keybed assembly so that's what we're doing right now. Anyway, let's get the keys back on this thing. Anyway, you've seen enough of how beyond repair this key bed is, so let's do what I should have done in the first place and yeet this boy out of here and get the new one in. <laughs> Alright, All right. thank you. So now the new key bed should just go right where the old one went. Well, and already this is feeling much better than the old one. We've got no clacking, the keys have proper travel, so that is promising. Oh, and also it, it fits. That's also promising. Future Davis here interjecting with a little mistake I learned after the fact. Make sure that the aftertouch cables are free before you put the key bed in. I didn't notice that from the factory these are like wedged in there and you have to kind of jiggle them out, which is not doable once it's inside there. And so I had to re take everything back out once I had it back in. But anyway, please save yourself that trouble. I also forgot to mention that at least in my case, this new key bed did not come with the adapter cables for the aftertouch. So I had to rip those out of the old key bed, which is perfectly fine because these are intact and the old key bed had them on hand. So you should be able to simply, uh, well, for starters, keep track of which is which, because I did not. <laughs> but I can tell by looking that there's a crease here, and this one is longer, which means it should reach the one that's further away. That would be this one. And it looks like this plug will only be plugged in one direction, and not the other. That's convenient. And then the shorter one reaches the one that is a shorter distance away. Go figure. So that should be correct. And then I'm just gonna crease this over like it was, which seems like a thing that I should not do, but that's how the old one was, so we're going with it. And then that just tucks in there, and this plugs in here, and we're all dandy. And future future Davis here to say that these cables were also not included, so that's fun. Uh, these go on the underside of the key bed. Um, I went ahead and just tore these off of the old one, but we can thread this one through here. Uh, actually, first let me take up this one that is taped down. And all of these are just gonna thread through 
that little white hole there. Oh geez, it just came out. That's fun. Okay, I'm just gonna take out this plastic part and thread it through separately and then put the plastic back in. That's all dandy. Thread this one through here now. Excuse me? What? In tarnation. Um, come here a second. You, uh, you, you see this? You see this here? And how, um, if I just put, put this back. See how, uh, that, that's not the same size? On this side, it's fine, but on this side, and I, I just checked on the old key bed and it's that way there too, um, the, the, the receptacle is smaller than the cable. And I have no idea which way it goes. If it's on, in, in the middle, or if I'm supposed to push it to one side or the other, or, um, well, I guess actually, in, in theory, it shouldn't matter as long as it's consistent on the other end. Because assumedly, um, wait, no, these two are the same. These two are the same width. And that's, that's where these are supposed to plug in. So, uh, hmm, that's interesting. Now, I assume that is because this key bed is 76 keys, but they also sell an 88 key version, which means they can reuse the PCB and the ribbon cables and just not include that on here. But I still don't get why they would just reuse the same port and just not solder some of the pins. That doesn't make any sense to me. So the question still remains, where the heck does this actually go? <gasps> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, hold on, come even closer. Look at this right here. This is my key. If I tried to plug it in in any other position other than pushed all the way to this side, this little pin would have nowhere to go because that hole right there is designed for this pin to go in. Okay, so this plugs in like that. No other way. There we go, holy crap. Uh, if you're following along, you're welcome for figuring that out so you don't have to. <laughs> anyway, um, back two levels of past me. <laughs> oh, this is my fifth time disassembling this thing. I'm so ready to be done with this. But I guess on the bright side, I am at least getting really familiar with this layout. Uh, you don't need to watch me reassemble this whole thing again. Back, back two layers of past me. Nope, this is future, future, future Davis to say I forgot the gosh heckin' <laughs> Gotta unplug these ribbon cables and get them routed through here and... At least I don't have to take apart the, the whole entire key bed again <laughs> for the sixth time. <laughs> okay, back three levels of past Davis now. With the new key bed in place, we can now put those nuts back as well as the screws underneath in whatever order you like. And with that now secure, we can grab the main PCB and first plug in that black ribbon cable to the power board and then shimmy in the main board back into place. Just make sure there are no wires or anything trapped underneath. Once it's there, we can put in the three screws that hold that board in place. And then we can plug in the rest of those ribbon cables for that board. It should be pretty easy to figure out where they go because they only fit one way. And finally, we can secure the ports with the washers and nuts for that. Make sure to do those first and then put the tiny screws in last to minimize the risk of stripping the plastic. With all that done, we can now grab the big top panel and carefully place it close enough to plug in those last two ribbon cables. And then I'm going to slowly start to rotate this down into place, making sure I'm not catching any wires anywhere. And this is what I messed up the first time when I saw the aftertouch cable sticking out the edge at the beginning of this video. So definitely take your time and triple check everything as you go. 
Once that's in place and you're sure the wires are where they need to be, we can go around back and put the seven rear screws in place and then the five on each side. After that, the whole keyboard is secure enough to flip over and get those last three screws on the bottom, so let's get those in place. And just like that, we've got a repaired keyboard. <laughs> really kind of terrified that I just forgot a random ribbon cable or something, but I guess that will be revealed shortly because, moment of truth, does it work? Let's go plug it in and find out. Okay, so the Nord is in place. The wiring is a little messy because I didn't want to put too much effort into it in case it doesn't work, but um, everything is plugged in except for power. So <laughs> let's give it a shot and hope for the best. Nothing's blown up yet, so that's a good sign. Question now is, will it turn on? We have lights. We have boot up sequence. No crashes or anything. All right. So now the question is, do we have audio? Let's see, is the expression pedal working? No. All right, well, that's our first issue. Sustain pedal? Nope. Oh, wait. Yes, it's just reverse polarity. Okay, um, let's try some audio. It's very quiet because this expression pedal is broken, but, um... Yeah, I don't know, that should be working. Uh, I guess I'll just deal with it soft for now. That's also not working. Did a ribbon cable get messed up or something? I'm terrified that I forgot a random ribbon cable or something. That works. Okay, well, the main thing I need to test here is the key bed. So first order of business is I'm gonna do a big old chromatic scale to make sure that all of the notes work. Success. And it sounds like the velocity is behaving correctly as well. So yeah, just the issue with the expression pedal, which I have no idea what that's about. I'm having too much fun. I missed playing on this thing. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna troubleshoot the expression pedal. Back in a sec. Yeah, okay, so the expression pedal, the mod wheel, and the pitch bend, and the aftertouch, that's what also wasn't working. So, took it apart again. There you are, you son of a biscuit. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> okay, take two. Hey! I've also set up main stage over here, and you can see on that that the expression pedal is responding there. Mod wheel is responding, hooray. Uh, let's take a listen and see what we get. Hey! Now we've got some control. Lovely, okay. And I don't think pitch bend is actually assigned on this patch. No, it's not. But you can see it moving here, so I know it's connected. <laughs> and then um, I don't think any of the patches that we have stored on the Nord right now actually use the aftertouch, but some of the things on main stage do. And let me just get a quick visual. Okay, good. You can see the pressure dial is responding to aftertouch. Excellent, I was worried about that from <laughs> the new key bed. <laughs> In fact, yeah, that actually seems a little more responsive than the old key bed. I have a feeling that was also starting to wear out on the old one. Okay, 
you can't hear anything. Let's make this a little more exciting. Turn down the master volume on the Nord, and we've got some wind happening here. And if I press down, Oh, that is beautiful. Oh man, the control on that is actually really improved. That is, it's, it's so much better. <laughs> All right, turning this back up. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So that is the inside of the Nord stage. This video was kind of messy, but th th that's me. If, I, I don't really consider myself a tutorial channel. If, if you're new here, this isn't really my usual content. And I'm, I'm certainly not a qualified technician for Nord or otherwise. This was just my experience figuring stuff out so that you hopefully don't have to. However, I would love if you look around my channel, I do all kinds of things, drop a like on whatever you like, and if you find yourself doing that a lot, then you might consider clicking the handy dandy subscribe button. And that way you will never miss a beat. So yeah, I hope this helped, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you later. Plug it in and find out. Except I'm not doing that today because it's 5.30. Oh, these cables are so sticky. Why? I have no idea where that came from, and I feel like a character in one of those movies where they wake up with an ancient insignia magically carved in blood on their hands. I, I don't know where it came from. <laughs>